I'm gonna post in a more in-depth video of um, how I scope the prosthetic out. So I thought before that I wanted to make a video about what products and tools I use to sculpt. So the first thing I have is something I use probably about like 99% of the time in any work I do and it is a Lazy Susan. I use this for everything. I use them so much that I actually have two other ones, two smaller ones. This one I got from Aldi for like $15 and then these two are the ones from Ikea. And they're about, I think, $18. But with the boards, I also put a clear contact paper on it so you can kind of see it. So that's just so nothing sticks to the wood and it's easier to clean. Like, I cast on this and I can just peel this the silicone off, like, easily. I love these boards because, like, when I'm sculpting or something like that, I can turn it around to get at every angle. So, yeah. The next thing I use is a tile. So this is just a tile from, like, Home Depot or Lowe's. You can get this in the flooring section. They're, like two dollars three dollars maybe so i have like bigger sizes like this for bigger prosthetics you know different sizes one and i have smaller ones like this and you want to make sure you get towels that don't have texture on them because that will transfer onto your prosthetic but these are great to sculpt on and then also like i can just pick them up and bring them outside to spray release on it and or just bring it anywhere i need to now on to the actual clay i use the clay that i use is chavant clay i'm pretty sure msp this one is hard, but I've used medium. These one is a little bit more expensive. I've used Plastilina from Michaels before. That works well too. As long as it is a non-air drying clay, it will work. This one is hard, so it's a little harder to, you know, like press on. So if you're more of a beginner, I would do a softer one just so it's easier to like mess with. I have like three of these box still from like six years ago. And I don't use those because I have a whole tub of reuse of clay that I just reuse over and over again. So anytime I sculpt, I just like scrape it off and put it back in this bucket if it's clean. So yeah. And I like that it's smaller pieces so it's easier to like, you know, smush around. To roll on my clay, of course, I use a rolling pin. This is a mini one and I think I got it from Blix Art Supplies. But you can probably find it in a lot of places. So I have a lot of tools but I'm going to go over my favorite ones that I use pretty much every single time. And these are the tools that I use the most. The first tool is the rake tool. It creates fine lines that when you want to join two pieces of clay, you just scrape it and then you can put those together and they'll most likely stick. This is also another type of raking tool. Um, it's one-sided and it just has like little sharp like edges on it, if you can, right there. So this is used and you do it like in a crisscross pattern and this will create an even surface that you can sculpt on. On mine, you can see how much I've used it and I definitely need to get new ones because it barely has any spikes left. This I think is kind of like a loop tool and it has like, it looks like this. And this is kind of used as like the other one in a crisscross pattern to create an even surface. It's just not as like sharp as the other one, so it's more like subtle. This is a smaller version of that. And this is kind of used for the same thing, but I also like to use this when I'm making like deeper sculpts. And you want to like dig deep into it to like make some details and stuff. This one is my favorite tool right here. So we put plumber's epoxy on it just so that it won't like break off and it makes it more durable. It's super thin and it's designed for more like delicate clay sculpting or clay removal. And then also this side is great also for like sculpting and like moving things around or like if you need to like smooth something out too as well i would definitely get this tool this one is from kemper tools so these are little sculpting tools that i got from michael's they came in a pack of like 10 i think and they all have like different rubber spots on them and on the other side have um, little ball points these little balls are great for sculpting as well you know it just creates like indents and stuff like that that aren't sharp and rounded you know the rubber side is to blend in things as well without sharp edges so these are both just kind of used for that then i have a bunch of spatulas in different shapes and sizes and they all function for like different things you can see in different parts of sculpting to make different shapes and this is another one of my favorite tools from pretty sure Kemper tools as well it has a sharp side on one end and then like a little scoop on the other side I especially use this when I'm first making a sculpt and I want to do like the overall design so I just create the shape you know that you want and then I use the scooper part to scoop out that middle clay to create like that indent I need and then from there you can like start sculpting and like you know make more fine details and then I just use this like almost like an exacto knife and like to cut things and stuff like that. And then for doing texture on a scope for like skin pores or like wrinkles or something. Um, so these are some of the tools I use. Bamboo brush. I cut the bristles shorter so that it will be more like hard because it was like soft bristled. And then this is also used for texture. Let's see if I can. It's hard to see, but it gives like this kind of like texture to it like that. So it's nice for wounds and stuff as well. I have these little texture tools like this. 
and when you stamp it it looks this one it looks i think that like yeah a little deeper one of my favorite texture tools are these like texture balls they usually come in four two i lost one my dog chewed so this is my last one standing the four balls have slightly different textures on them so i think i'm gonna have to rebuy them so i can have all of them but let me show you what this is so yeah you just cover put it over the surface and it creates that texture like super fast but for cheaper options i also use like stipple sponge the harder ones because it can also create like a similar texture to the ball but you know this one is just a little slower but it still works I also use brushes when I sculpt so if there's an area that I want to kind of like melt down a little I'll take a brush with like alcohol and naphtha on it and that will help make the clay like melt a little so you can make it more smooth I think those are all my sculpting tools so I'm gonna move on to the next one so for the flashing I use the same clay I used to sculpt with which is yeah so I used to like take a block of clay um like roll it out and then like make little strips out of it but over the past year I found a faster and easier way to do it and it's with this this is a clay extruder and it comes with a bunch of these like little thingies that you can put in that the that will shape the clay so this one is the perfect one for what I need and the perfect size for flashing and then after the flashing you want to make clay walls and for that I usually use wet clay or like this natural clay this is from michael's so this is like pottery clay i think it's super soft it does air dry so you want to make sure it's in like a container that won't dry it out just have it in a plastic bag like this use this clay instead of the other clay to make clay walls because this is so much softer and malleable so if you need to make like really th tall clay walls or like thick ones this one is like so much easier to handle than that other clay I mean, I mentioned this before, but I'll just say it again. The 99% alcohol, I use that for sculpting as well. I use it to clean up around the mold. And then I also use it with like paintbrush when I'm like sculpting to like mel help melt the clay and soften it up. So yeah, definitely have 99% alcohol. And I think that's it. If you have any questions about what I used or where I got them, feel free to ask. I'm always happy to help. But yeah, bye.